Hi everyone and welcome to this introductory tutorial on using OneNote class notebooks on a MacBook Air. Um, today our goal is to get to this point where I am in the OneNote app presently um, and looking at a class notebook that has a collaboration space, a content library, and then individual student notebooks uh, that have sections built into them. Now, typically with OneNote, uh, building something uh, this complex would take quite a bit of time, um, but Microsoft, through its class notebook program uh, in Office 365, helps you build this uh, very painlessly, um, and so you'll be able to have uh, individual class notebooks uh, for each of your periods or an entire uh, class. Just as a quick tour of OneNote, uh, there's a number of things that you can do, but the first thing to understand is uh, that the layout very much resembles a binder. So up along the top here, we have tabs and then collections of tabs. For example, this collection of tabs uh, in the content library has um, the potential to add sub-tabs to it. I can use this jumping up arrow uh, later on once we get the class notebook created to go back to this home page. Now, uh, the class notebook creates a collaboration space for all students and teachers to edit. So students and teachers can use the collaboration space for brainstorming or other collaborative work. The content library is a space that teachers can post content themselves but students cannot edit or manipulate. And then the student notebooks, which are represented here by uh, two staff members, actually. Uh, the student notebooks, um, the individual student can see their notebook and the teacher can see the notebook, but the students can't see each other's. So Cheryl Means will just see hers. Christine Horowitz will just see hers, but because I'm the teacher, I can see everybody's, which makes it real easy for me to do notebook checks if I wanted to do that, or check uh, assignment progress. So how do we get to this point? Well, we're not necessarily going to start in the OneNote app. First, we're going to start at the Office 365 uh, portal homepage. Now, I log in by navigating to portal.office.com and entering my Office 365 username and password. For those of you who don't have a homepage that looks like this, uh, we can also navigate to uh, class notebooks from the tiles in the top left. Now, at District 7, all of our staff have access to the class notebook tab. If you don't see it either on your homepage here or in the tiles in the top left, Click on View All My Apps, and sometimes there are some apps that don't make it to uh, your default menu. You can select class notebooks uh, from this menu, however. But uh, I'm going to start by clicking on the tiles and going into Class Notebook. That pops up another tab, and then I have uh, four uh, options to choose from. Now, I want to point out here, too, that if during the course of uh, this video or this video series, uh, you need some extra help. There's some really great Microsoft uh, resources out there. If you click View User Guide, um, you can go to uh, a user guide that Microsoft has put together. But keep in mind that some features are not available on a MacBook, and so it's important to watch out for those things that are um, screenshotted or recorded from a Windows PC. Two, create a class notebook. Um, we're going to click the blue button. After we create this class notebook, I want to point out that this home page is where you'll add or remove students or add other co-teachers. Um, so we're going to start by creating a class notebook. We're going to give that notebook a name. You'll notice that as I'm creating my name, it's important to use your last name so that students can easily identify not just the course, but then also the teacher because they will see that in the notebook name. This is a general overview of the sections that will be created. Uh, like I said, the uh, collaboration space allows teachers and students to edit. In anything in the content library, only teachers can edit, but students can view. And then in student notebooks, teachers can edit the content but between the individual student notebooks, students can see their own content but can't see each other's. We'll click Next because there's not much to change there. 
On this screen, we have the option of adding another teacher to use the class notebook. If you're using class notebook for the first time, uh, it may not be a bad idea to share your technology coach or someone else on your content area or grade level uh, to help you out with the process. This uh, does give them teacher permission to edit and view the entire notebook so they can see what's going on uh, in your class. Now here's where you can start adding student names. If you're setting this up uh, before school starts, so uh, over the summer or uh, during another break, and you're not quite sure of your student enrollment yet, uh, that's no problem. You can add uh, one student, uh, maybe a former student, or maybe it's a staff member or a colleague, um, just to act as a placeholder until you get your student enrollment back in. Finally, uh, we have an option to decide what sections go into the student space. So within each student notebook, uh, these are the tabs by default Microsoft sets out. Now, I don't see much use for a quizzes tab. Um, and for the most part, handouts, uh, students are going to download themselves from the content library. So you see that I can turn those sections off. I can also create extra sections. So for example, if I wanted to separate out uh, vocabulary work uh, that my students do, I can do that. I can also add another section, say for example, I wanted them to do some reflections. I can add that into uh, the notebooks as well. Fortunately, in the last couple months, uh, Microsoft has added the ability to uh, add sections in mass later on afterwards. So if you start with just a couple sections, um, you can add some later on. The last step here is just a preview. Uh, it's going to show you what it's creating and um, give you an example. Finally, when you click Create, Office 365 does all the work for you, setting up all those sections, making copies of those sections, uh, setting the right permissions, etc. All those things that would take you quite a bit of time to do uh, have all been done in just a few minutes. Next, I'm going to show you what email students receive from Office 365 and then how they can sync their Office 365 uh, class notebook into the app so that they have offline access to this binder that you just created.